We welcome the online people to the Inner Garden Online Chapel, and we would like to say we love you. So just go out and tell your neighbors that you're glad to see them here today. <laughs> Well, before we go on with the program, I'd like to explain a little bit. If you look in the center, you have a printout called Pittance of Time. This is a video. For those people that have internet, they can go on the internet. Or if you really care to send for the video, you could. Unfortunately, we are not set up with the convenience that we had when we were at our center, which we could have projected that video for you. I want to explain a little bit what the video is about. They're in a shopping center, and it becomes 11 o'clock on the 11th of the 11th. And they ask them to take two minutes of silence. And there's one gentleman that's like many of us, in a hurry, 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 he's got his daughter with him. And he's pushing, trying to get the girl at the counter to check out his groceries. And of course, the two minutes of silence comes in. And when that two minutes of silence comes in, he still proceeds to try to get the attention of the clerks and tries to get rushing through. And this is what the video is about and the song is about.
people think that if you've seen that video, as I did, I had first seen the video a couple of years ago. And when I first seen it, I was so taken by the music, by the, the feeling, I didn't really look at the background. And Derek White Sky Crowd has brought us a beautiful reef that he put together and placed in front here. And he was at my house the other day, and I said to him, have you seen this? And he said, oh, yes, that's the one where the man's in such a hurry. Hurry, 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 and you can't take two minutes of time. And I said, yes, that's right. So I decided that was probably a good piece to play so that we realized that it is just a pittance of time and that we have many people who did not have the opportunity to come back and have that time. Now, my two daughters work in the school system, and one daughter was at school and they had the assembly. And at the assembly, the one daughter said there was a letter read that was a letter from a veteran who sent, or from a uh, soldier, who sent a letter home to his daughter. He'd been injured in uh, Vimy. And it's called, it's one of the letters from Vinny. If you go online, you might be able to find it. In the letter, he says to his daughter, I've been injured and I'm getting better and I will be home soon and I will be so glad to see your smiling face and he's so excited about coming home and he sent the letter home. And unfortunately, he took an infection and did not make it home. And so that was very heart rendering and the one daughter that teaches out of Maple Ridge felt that she just melted down and went into tears while that was on. The other daughter works out of New Westminster Secondary High School, and they had their memorial, or Remembrance Day, and they had a gentleman on there that had been serving, and he was talking about leaving your family behind, leaving your loved ones behind. And he was talking about leaving a young daughter behind as he had to go twice into, into battle in the last short years and has served twice and he was come back now and had got to see his daughter and how he had missed so much of his daughter's life. And he, but he was just so happy that he was able to serve our country and be able to keep us free. And my daughter broke down into tears right to the tips of her toes, she said songs were coming up. Because he remembers a time when I talked about my father. And he was in the Second World War, and I was five years old and had gone to kindergarten. And I think I, during the time that he was in the Army in Canada, I had finally got to grade one when he was ready to go overseas. But unbeknown to me, he was shipping up and he was home on his last leave. And we used to be able to go to a little corner store and buy ice cream cones, that's gonna really floor most people, for three cents. And if you had five cents, you could have a big double decker, like the double cone, with two scoops of ice cream. And my father walked to the corner with my cousin and I, and he gave us a dime. And he said, okay, you two girls go down the street, and have your ice cream. And I turned and waved at my daddy. And he didn't. He waved back. I didn't know he wouldn't come back that way. Fortunately for me, let me pray again. He did come back from overseas after being over there for five years. And I was one of the lucky ones. But many times during those five years, we stood in assembly in our classroom, and the girl behind me cried, and her daddy did not come. So today, as much as we would be busy, and sometimes get too busy like all of us do, we don't take that pittance of time. We don't take that time to be tolerant and accepting of one another because we lost enormous amount
wars, especially in the First World War, that was supposed to be the war to end all wars. We lost 121 service people from Canada alone. Each of those people had family, as I had a dad, that it must have ripped his heart out to stand there and wave at me as I walked down the street thinking, it might be the last time I see my little girl. And every one of those people left mothers, and they left fathers, and they left grandparents, and they left wives, and they left children, and they left husbands, as we're into the other wars now. But during the Second World War, there were a few women that served in the nursing department and the Red Cross and things of that nature. They didn't mostly go into battle. But as it's come down to the Second World War, more of our women served in the areas that were dangerous. And in the Second World War, we lost 44,000 men and women from Canada alone. And that was an enormous amount of people <coughs> that they touched the lives of how many people here. In Korea, my husband served in Korea. My husband's father served the First World War. My father served the Second World War, as John did, as a number of other men that are down here and women served. Ozzy served in the Korean crisis, and thank you God, came back safely from his ventures. All of us in our family were really fortunate. His father came back, my father came back, and he came back. Right now, we've lost 171 peacekeepers today from the Canadian forces. And we've lost 77 Canadian that have died in Afghanistan. That is way too many people because we do not <coughs> have tolerance and we do not have acceptance. What is the, this all about? Well, I can tell you from experience that I know people that were on the other side of those battles. They were our so-called enemy. And one of them married my very dear friend. And he was 14 years old when he was sent into the German army. How much did he have to say about what he had to do? Give him a gun and either kill or be killed. And who makes these decisions that take these young people into battle of our best? Of our best and loved ones. And why did they go into fight? Are they fighting really for a cause or are they fighting for greed of some people that want to take control and be able to have more power? Are they fighting for political reasons? But for sure they are fighting so we can be free and that we can be able to worship in this chapel whichever way we choose to worship. And we are not told that we cannot hold chapel. Nor is the Catholic Church told that they cannot. I have one dear friend who was in Germany as a Jewish man. He was 15 years old and his family shipped him to Italy. He got him out of there before he was taken to the camps. He came from a very well-to-do family. And he was on the docks, no money, no food, and the longshoremen in Italy fed him and guided him. And he eventually went to England and he joined the British Army and served in Africa. And he too came back because I've met him since then, of course, and he's a man in his middle 80s now. And he can tell stories that would curl your hair about the atrocities that happened in his country of Germany where he was born. So it's not the countries that we need to be angry with. We're not the people that we need to be angry with.
home when I don't agree particularly with something one of my younger ones in the family did. And I think they're foolish and I maybe argue with them. When I should say, I hope that you will come if you need me and stand back and let them bruise their knees if they're going to need to do that and be there and help them if they put their hand out to help. But I should be judging and criticizing. So it starts in my home. And it starts with my friends. And the acceptance of what they do. And it's not that I'm going to definitely uh, condone everything that someone does. I may dislike what they do. I may actually think it's a, a horrible thing that they do. But I must love the person as a person of God and try to be tolerant and non-judgmental about these people. Because it's when we start being picky and judgmental about people that the starts the seed of war. Whether it's a disagreement in your household, a disagreement with your friends, and it pulls you away from all the good things that could be happening. So I'd ask you today that, that you remember these people that have sacrificed their lives so that we can be together today, that we can have a great time after the service. We're going to have coffee, wonderful cakes that Joyce brought. Wait till you see them. Uh, Joyce took all the calories out of the cakes. Yeah. <laughs> Joyce took all the calories out of the cakes, but we've got some wonderful cakes to celebrate because these people who gave their life want us to celebrate that we are here, celebrate their lives and celebrate their sacrifice and honor them in the best way we can do. And if they were standing here today, they would say, be all you can be, because in living well, you honor me. Thank you. God bless you. Florence, can I say something? Sure. Um, never done this or felt the need to, but I feel the need to, feel the need to honor um,
and John was a young man when you went into service in the Second World War, but most of the ones that were my dad's age are gone now, and so most of them have um, Winston, he was um, six years, I believe, serving. Winston. Winston. Yes, he's here now. You also served, right? How many years were you there? One. Five. So you were like my dad. He was in Italy for a great deal of his time and then went into Holland. So maybe they, maybe you knew each other. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you for serving these people. And on to... Sure, go ahead, Chris. What I would like to tell you is that in my family alone, I sat the other night trying to remember the others. And I got up to 22 men. came on. 
off of the third step, whoop, like that, right into my father's arms. So I think we must be able to uh, identify more from the energy because in five years at that time, I had obviously changed. My father wouldn't have, other than pictures that went over, would not have recognized me and my dad in five years of war would probably have changed a great deal as well. But I just held on and held on to his neck and wouldn't let go. So where's everybody? Where's your mother? Uh, never mind them, I'm here. <laughs> so there was a lot of great things. And as Joyce said, and I think any of the other people will say, um, they were in an area, as, as, as were the people that were in any part of Europe, they were being bombed. And, but yet, there was a lot of people that got together, they shared things together. You know, and the people that lived in those areas, they didn't know from day to day whether they were going to live, never mind whether the loved ones that were out there were going to live. But they got together and they shared together and they had good times together and it didn't cost a lot of money to go to big dances and, and dance with these people that were coming from the services and the girls that were old enough to go to dances. I mean, I was only 11 when I came back, so uh, when Dad came back, so I hadn't got the the enjoyment of going to the dances where all the sailors were, thank goodness I might not have met Ozzy in his uniform if I got to those dances before. <laughs> uh, but I did go to a dance during the Korean War. They called it a crisis at the time you were in, didn't they, Ozzy? And um, this sailor was leaning against the stage like this, watching me dance with someone else. And uh, I guess the bell bottom trousers and the coat of navy blue did it. And there we go. So the rest is history. So we thank everybody for sharing their thoughts. And Joyce is going to work later. Um, absolutely does magnificent mediumship. Used to do it with Dick uh, during the time that any time there, there was a remembrance service, we would try to either work together or Dick and Joyce would work because it seems like the armed forces just all start coming in on that day. They're all here. Uh, gathered around. So Joyce and I are going to work with that a little later. So I'd like to uh, thank everybody for helping us with that. We're going to do our healing meditation. And as you know, this is a healing ministry. We don't leave that part out. And anybody who needs hand on healing can go to the back. The facilitators, the healing facilitators that are in the church will go behind the chairs and will give direct healing if you should need to have that administered during the eight minutes. And during that time, we would ask everybody to participate because everybody, that energy coming through together, the concentration of that energy, where one and more are gathered together in my name, so am I, so God is here. Okay, do just uh, be patient with the music on, with the meditation on.
allow it to expand into the mind. Let the mind open and be receptive. Let the mind be positive.
relatives of yours that are needing visitation at the hospital, let us know and one of the facilitators will go and uh, take the will uh, blessings from the church to these people. And if somebody happens to be kind of confined at home and needs a little hand, maybe somebody to pick up a few groceries or whatever, do contact us because we can see that someone can help you out for that few days that you're needing that. Uh, I'd also like to be very thankful for the volunteers that we have in the music area. We have both Celia Collins, who is helping us today, and Jean Thomas that helps us as well. And today we have back with us. I'm, yeah, I was yeah, it's not right on the head. I'm saying the last day first. Uh, gives, gives, gives. Um, Iris has been away a little bit because they've had a little challenge with the building that they have, and they have to go over to Galliano and stay there most of the time. So we've been running back and forth to the two places we haven't had Iris there for a while. And she and her John, she and John decided that they would join us today if they could before going back to Galliano. And we're so glad to have all of them. So we give them a hand. Um, next week we're having Jerry Rector, who is an actual actor, director on television, has been on in movies. A uh, very interesting man, has worked in a spiritual group down in California when he was there. He is an identical twin, and he and his brother both are actors, which is quite interesting. And he's going to come and share some of the positive energies that he likes to sort of share with how you acquire your dreams and and use your spiritual self in whatever area that God gives you. I got a phone call from Jerry this morning. Did you? And he said today is he's actually officially became a Canadian citizen. Today is the today is his anniversary where he became officially a Canadian citizen. Oh really? Yeah. So it's his anniversary as well. So we're about to sing happy anniversary, happy birthday, and all that stuff to him as well. Uh, we also want to know if there's any new people here to this chapel for the first time. Okay? Okay? Um, we have some white envelopes on the table there. If one of the uh, people would like to either Derek or well, I guess uh, Amber's going to do it. Um, keep your hands up and we're going to give you a package. All the people that are in our church eventually are going to get a package like this because they were all new one time. But right now we haven't got them all done, so we've got some for uh, people that are visiting for the first time. And uh, there's two up here. Actually, you haven't been at this chapel before, but you used to be here with Corey and Mark, but we'll let you have a package as a new person here to this one. That's great. Thank you so much. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, we should have enough that everybody can take one home with them. It's just a little... Uh, Gift that we can keep you for the next year or two. Uh, also, any anniversaries or birthdays this week? Well, we did have that anniversary that we're talking about. And it is. My daughter in law has her birthday today. Good. Okay. And I couldn't get in touch with her this morning. I guess they off guard that in some way. So we'll say happy birthday to her in school. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And I have a friend named Lil who comes here often. And she's My grandmother's birthday. And, tomorrow. and one of my granddaughters yesterday and another friend of mine on Tuesday. So we'll just say happy birthday and happy anniversary.
other real quick announcements I'd like to make is that we're going to have White Gift Sunday on December 16th. People don't know what that is, and some of the more orthodox churches, the Sunday before Christmas, basically, or a couple Sundays before Christmas, have one day when you bring food in for the people that are not as lucky as we are, and they usually wrap them with tissue, but you don't have to. We'll have a box here and pick it up, and we will be giving it to the food bank here in White Rock to help with our community. So that will be wonderful if you do that on the 16th. Also, a uh, future situation will be that we're having a spring bazaar, and anybody who's a crafter, anybody who wants to rent a table, get working on the stuff now, because in the spring, probably in around March or April, uh, we will get it ready, and we'll have a big bazaar, and we're gonna have a little tea room up back, where the tea readers will do a little reading while you eat your scones, and, and have your tea, and you have English scones, and all that good stuff cream, you know, the Devonshire cream and all that stuff. And so uh, we're looking forward to doing that. Also, I did hear from uh, Gail Lane by email. She wants to come back in about April. So mm -hmm. we're hoping we can get her back working with us at April. So that all has to be planned. So that's some of the future. And now, this is your chance to give free will offering and help us support this church. Sometimes there was quite a bit of 
We lost somebody in the Navy that was torpedoed. Were you? Okay, I thought that this chap, there was a, a, a tremendous tragedy. They all lost their lives, but he's coming through saying, I was aboard ship and the torpedo hit just boom and we were gone. Yeah, and he's exactly, he's been here. And uh, it just wants to bring that. Also, I have a tail gunner from the Air Force or from somebody that worked in, you know, was working on guns on planes that has come in. And that could be a friend of my cousin's who actually was aboard a ship with him or plane with him. And he had his plane hit and the tail gunner uh, was lost. So I feel that he's coming through. One of my cousins is coming through with that as well. But they just want to, you know, basically say they're here, they're well in spirit, they are around you, they certainly join you, just in the thousands of people coming in during times like this. I'd also like to mention that there was a young um, lady gentleman that sent for a, get a sash for his brother who's in Afghanistan. And uh, Dale Haggerty, wrote back and asked if they could put a picture of this gentleman on the uh, website. And the fellow that named Captain Jim Quinn uh, wrote back and said he would prefer that if they put a picture of some of the boys that have lost their life on there. But thank them very much for the thought and the blessings that are coming through. So a lot of uh, Native um, Americans, uh, North Americans, and there's a lot of many people that served are moving in at this time. I can see them coming in. And also, don't forget that we had a number of Sikh people that were serving in our Second World War in the British forces as well. So we have just thousands and thousands of energies. This room is just full of spiritual energy from from the wars that have come and from the young men that have just died, men and women that have just died from the, uh, Afghanistan or also moving in. And uh, so Joyce and I would just, we could be here all day. So I, I, I would like to come to Sheila though. Sheila, can you hear me with the mic, Sheila? Yes. Okay. Um, one of the reasons that I thought I'd put the mic on because I'd like to come to you. And there is a lady who served in the, the war. And now whether she served in, in actually armed forces or Red Cross or in a nursing department, I don't know. But she comes in around you. And I don't know if she's on a, a friend link or she's on a, a relative link. But what she's doing is she's coming in around you right now and putting her hand on your shoulder. And she's saying, God bless you for remembering us. Thank you for remembering us. And also, um, to Ingrid in the front, uh, same thing. I'm getting tremendous support from the ladies of service coming in around you right now. So, and it may be from the country where you were living during the Second World War, and a lot of the women that 
observed. I can see them wrapping bandages, and I don't think they necessarily were in for in army uniform. You know what I mean? They were just like uh, working, wrapping bandages for to go to the troops, putting supplies, working with supplies. And there was a lady there. Either she was a friend of your mother. Do you understand that? That worked in that area. And you can check it back. You'll find that she was working with them. Uh, divisions where where they were volunteering and, and getting supplies ready for the soldiers and the people in the front lines. So check that out. You'll find that they they were very much uh, working to help send stuff to the front lines. And I can see parcels going. Lots of parcels going. Also, Celia, from your family, there were a lot of parcels that went to uh, loved ones that were serving. I can see somebody in your family that did a lot of baking and a lot of cooking. That was was there a grandmother on your side that was quite a good cook, quite a good baker? Not that I'm aware of, but she could. She could. Yeah, uh, I don't know how you would check it out, but. It seems like that she was with a church organization that they parceled up a lot of things uh, to go to the front, to the boys, you know, socks and food and goodies and things, cans of, of stuff. And you, was, what was yours? My mom. Your mom as well? Yeah, so that there's a lot of people coming in that are just, you know, they're just stacked in here, just packed. We've got the whole copy of service. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're just they're just moving in. As you watch, uh, sometimes on television, you watch them come on parade, and they're just parading in. It, it's just the place is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Did you get anything else there, Tris? I got my brothers. Your brothers are there. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> All our families are coming around, and so that's really good. We'll have to end up, but we would like everybody to to uh, join us in, in a closing prayer and in the circle, and we're going to uh, do Let There Be Love. And we would like everybody to just remember, as the day goes on, all those people that are standing, and your pipers here again, the one with the Air Force Blue. Uh, last year, I had to look up what that meant. There was a guy in Tartan that was kind of, a, uh, kind of an Air Force Blue, and I went kind of a maroon and a yellow line running through it. So I went home and looked up the chart and found out that it was the RAF chart. So that's who he is. Okay, so he's back piping us again. Oh, well, that's There we go. So if we just get ready to um, join hands. And Joyce, do you want to say a little bit? Thank you.